Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Windows 10 deployment and how to create the task sequence that will do just that. And there are some options that you want to consider um, in terms of the automation level. One, you have user-driven, which is a user-driven installation, which is called UDI, and you just open up the user-driven um, uh, application and you can start building out your pages from that. You can have it fully automated using a scripts and answer files that automate the entire deployment. You also can use a dynamic, uh, using it, which is a combination of user-driven and automation, or a hybrid solution, or using some input while the rest is automated. So uh, those are the different options that you can do. And again, you know, creating the task sequence, deploy Windows 10, or deploy a operating system, there's a lot of flexibility. So with that, let's get started. So here with the, uh, now I did create one already. Um, so, but that's okay, we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove that. I'm gonna show you how to um, build this out. All right, so with that, you have your reference image, you have your system image in there. And again, I don't have an upgrade package. Now, I do, but it, it's an upgrade package to 1803. So if you have any um, Windows 10 in your environment that's uh, older than 1803, you can actually upgrade them. And I can show you that in a different video. For right now, it's just that we're gonna Go ahead and just create a task sequence to deploy Windows 10. So here you have create an MPT task sequence or you have your OSD, OSD task sequence. I'm just going to show you the OSD task sequence. Now I have integrated MPT within SCTM and you can't do that if you wanted to take advantage of some of those MPT task sequences features. Uh, but here we're just going to do a standard straight um, OSD task sequence. So here are the options you can either um, install. You can build and capture a reference image. You can upgrade, you can have a task sequence, or you can have a completely automated custom ta task sequence that's blank, and you can build out all the different components and steps that you want to have in there. Right now, I'm just going to show you a simple simple install. This would be like installing an image that on um, machines that come through the door and you slap your own image on there, or you're going to upgrade someone that, uh, well, again, that's an upgrade, so that's, just, you know, if you're going from one operating system to another, that's more of an upgrade scenario. But here, I'm just going to do an install, give it a name. So I'm going to call it Windows 10 X64 image. Um, and then I'm going to grab the boot image I want, which is I'm going to do 64. And then you can give it a description. Now I'm going to go ahead and browse to that image, which is Windows 10. And I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to do Pro, but that's okay, even though mine's Enterprise. Uh, and then it's going to format the drive. Now, I, now you can configure BitLocker at this point. Well, I'm going to skip that step because I don't have BitLocker in my environment. I'm going to go ahead and enable the password so I have a way to get on the machine. Um, now, again, you can script all this stuff out. I'm just kind of showing you how to do the basic task sequence. And then you go next. Now, um, here's your options. You can do join a work group if you wanted to just make it a part of a work group. Uh, here I do have a domain, so I'm going to go ahead and add this computer to the domain. And then I'm going to pick an OU. I'm just going to go ahead now. Um, I can say I want um, all my computers to go to this OU, or you can just go to the default OU. By default, if you don't specify an OU, it'll automatically go to the default OU. But I'm going to just put it here uh, just to show you that you can, you know, if you have different locations throughout the United States or globally where you have different locations, uh, you may, may have a more complicated setup in this, but I'm just kind of showing you some of the general steps. And then of course, the account that you need to use to add that computer to the domain, I'm gonna use administrator, um, which is fine. Now, most companies, they will have their own unique account that's created specifically for adding computers to the domain. So I'm just using this account for now just for demo purposes. Next, and then this is to install the client. So I'm just gonna go next. And now I'm not gonna use the user state migration, so we're gonna skip that step for now, but here's the area where you can do that if you wanted to use the user state migration tool, but we're gonna skip that here. Um, now, at this point, you can either um, require installation for the updates where you have uh, and then also you can available updates, which is you schedule the updates. I'm gonna, I like to just schedule the updates. So at this point, I'm just gonna do none for now. And just get that. And I can show you how to do that later in another video. Now here's where you can install the different applications that for this image, you want you know certain applications to be installed. Or, uh, or maybe you don't want any application, but it's just like for a certain group of people that need certain apps. Um, so 
Um, so here I'm just going to go and click on, and I'll just say uh, this image will get Reader and let's say Google Chrome. And I'll just put that there. That way, when the image is done, these installation, these packages, um, applications will then get installed after the fact. Um, and again, so I'll go ahead and say next there, and then next, and then complete. So now we have a Windows 10 task sequence. Now, when you look down to the references tab, this references all the components within this task sequence. So you can see that I've got Adobe Reader, I've got a boot image, and as you can see right here, this is all of the content. It's already been distributed to all of the DPs. Now, you do not need to distribute a task sequence. You only need to make sure that the references for this, this task sequence has been distributed to all of your DPs. And that's basically it. Now, when you go into the task sequence itself, so we're gonna go ahead and edit this task sequence that's originally created. So as you can see, these are the components that we are, this, this task sequence is going to do. Now, this is just a bare minimal basic task sequences. Usually there's a lot more stuff going on in these task sequences. So you can sort of add those things here. You can add driver packages, additional driver packages. Let's say you want to add some, like a script to do some something. You can do a command line here or run a PowerShell script that changes some tweaks or uh, uh, features or whatever in, uh, in your image. You can restart a computer. You can um, do some network settings. You can, uh, of course, you don't want to capture stuff, but you can apply network settings. Uh, here, and there's also the NBT. Now, because I integrated NBT, you're seeing that here, but you can't integrate NBT with OSD, so keep that in mind. Uh, and of course, here's your user state stuff. You can add some stuff in here. Uh, if you wanted to do some additional stuff with BitLocker, you can do that here. Uh, so you can, even though I just kind of drew the wizard, I created a basic um, um, steps but you can still come in here and add some more components you can add folders in here with different models and manage driver packages and then you can use this option for like drivers you can say uh, a condition of if statement that if model equals something in the bios that it equals this model then apply this this driver package so um again depending on how much stuff you have in the task sequence and what it's doing, the task sequence will either run slow or it will run fast. So it just really depends on how much automation level you want to have in your environment and your task sequence during your deployment. And that's basically it for how to create the task sequence to deploy an operating system. Again, there's a lot more stuff that goes into it, but I just kind of wanted to show you a general way to get started. Um, there's a lot of articles. I'll put one down below about how to apply drivers and what that means from Microsoft. So you can kind of see, you know, those steps that we just talked about or I just demoed for you, you know, a little bit more depth into what to consider uh, in, those in, in that regard. So again, um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more stuff coming your way. Uh, great. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.